Hello, I'm Dr. George Andros, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about coordinated care for the diabetic patient. It may come as a surprise that foot problems, such as ulcerations, are the number one reason that diabetics are admitted to hospitals. But the diabetics themselves are keenly aware of how important foot ulcers are. Every year, they account for the spending of tens of billions yes, billions of healthcare dollars. More importantly, diabetics know that more than 90% of major amputations of the foot and leg are preceded by a foot ulcer. Prompt treatment of diabetic foot ulcers when they are small, or better still, prevention of ulcers altogether, is best for everyone. Of course, best for the patients, but also for the doctors who must treat them and the families that provide patient support for what can be a challenging, lengthy, and often disappointing ordeal. Early treatment of the ulcers often fails to occur because the patient has neuropathy, which is a condition occurring in more than 50% of diabetics who have had the disease for more than 10 years. Because neuropathy destroys the ability to perceive pain that should accompany the ulcer, Early diagnosis, and hence treatment, fails to happen. These neglected ulcers escape diagnosis and may then go on to become infected. Infection brings with it an increase in the need for circulation if there is to be any chance of healing. At this critical point, unless this complex combination of painless ulcer, infection, and inadequate circulation is corrected, the stage is set for amputation. We are now learning that the care of these complex foot problems requires an expert team of specialists. At a minimum, the team is composed of a diabetic podiatrist and a vascular surgeon. The podiatrist cares for the ulcer and the foot by acutely draining abscesses, treating ulcers, and removing dead tissue. The vascular surgeon determines if the circulation is sufficient to heal the ulcer and control the infection. When needed, other specialists, such as infectious disease, endocrinologists to care for the diabetes, nutritionists and neurologists are called to complete the multidisciplinary team. In many instances, the circulation is good enough and the ulcer is healed with local care and amputation may be minimal or completely avoided so that the foot is saved. If the circulation is inadequate, specialized non-invasive ultrasound tests and angiograms are mandatory. Determining if the circulation is good enough is subtle and every effort must be made in diagnosis if a major amputation is to be avoided. If a blockage in the circulation is diagnosed, treatment is possible in over 95% of cases. In many cases, the circulation can be restored with minimally invasive techniques using special balloon catheters and other devices to perform angioplasty of arteriosclerotic plaques or so-called hardening of the arteries. Because the artery blockages can be long and complex, it is often advisable to perform a bypass operation in which a vein from the same leg is used to tap off of the normal circulation above and extend down to a normal artery beyond the plaque. Healing the foot ulcers may require only a few weeks, but often many months are required to achieve complete healing and normal walking. Recent medical studies have shown that the best chance of healing a diabetic foot ulcer results when the patient is cared for in a specialized diabetic foot center with an expert multidisciplinary team. For now, there are only a few such true centers around the country. But patients are demanding them more and more, and the medical profession is responding to their patients' needs. And once that ulcer is successfully healed, the team stays on the job to be certain that it does not recur. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.